Hello, everyone. I'm Kevin Rudd, President of the Asia Society. Welcome uh, to our series of conversations with Asian Americans who uh, are having an impact right across America in different ways, from different backgrounds. And today we're joined by someone who's having their own impact and at a very young age. Her name is Mina Fedor. She's a seventh grader in Northern California. Just a few weeks ago, she found herself speaking to a crowd of more than a thousand people at a rally, uh, which she helped organize to protest against the racism we have seen against the Asian American community. So Mina, tell us about you. First of all, how old are you and where do you go to school? Um, I am, I just turned 13 years old and I go to school in the East Bay in Northern California. Um, okay. Yeah. And, and and tell me about the school. What sort of school is it? Um, I go to a school in Berkeley, um, in East Bay, and um, I really like it there. Yeah. That's good. And uh, what are the uh, subjects you enjoy best at school? What, what, what do you think is most fun? Oh, well, I really like learning science um, and also math, um, but my favorite thing to study uh, mostly outside of school right now is ethics and philosophy. Yeah. Ethics and philosophy. Wow. I didn't know how to spell those when I was 13 years old, let alone to study them. And by the way, I was always rotten at uh, science and math. So, uh, so uh, I'm glad you're doing good stuff in what they call STEM. I told you what STEM is these days, so science, technology, uh, and uh, mathematics, engineering and mathematics. Good stuff. <laughs> So, Mina, you um, are a uh, Korean-American, is it right? Um, yeah, I am half Korean-American and half um, Slovak. My mom immigrated here from Korea, uh, from South Korea, and my dad immigrated here from Eastern Europe. Um, he escaped with his family from communism uh, before the Velvet Revolution. Um, so I am wow. half Korean, half Slovak. Okay. Well, what a great family mix. Um, you're a bit like much of uh, modern America, which is uh, we come from everywhere. So out of South Korea uh, and out of Slovakia. So that's a really interesting uh, family combination. So tell me, um, why did you get involved in this, um, uh, this um, rally most recently? How did that come about? Explain it to me. Um, well, it all started actually when my mom was deliberately coughed at in public, just walking down the street. Um, oh my god! Mm. Yeah, it was it was very um, it was it was very eye it was eye opening to me, and it really hit home. It really hit close mm. to home. Um, and I actually I spoke about it in my school assembly. Um, I spoke about the rise in xenophobia against the API community, um, and I was really nervous about it because no one was really covering the issue a year ago, mm. and. Um, yeah, I was I was nervous, but I felt like I needed to do it for my community and um, just because I, I personally also felt like I needed to say something. Um, and as the year progressed, I kept hearing about these really horrible stories about um, I heard about kids walking to school with sticks to protect themselves in San Francisco. And I've there. Have been these are Asian-American kids. Hmm. Yes. Um, wow. Yeah, and I, my brother and me have both been called names, and um, it is also important to note that racism has been around for a very long time, especially um, xenophobia against the API community, but COVID has really um, sort of amplified these kinds of things. Um, but yeah, so through the year, I saw all these things happen, but I also saw more coverage happening, and also a lot of other um, people speaking out and um, organizing the events for the AAPA community and um, more and more support building. So I really wanted to do something about it. Um, so I, about two months ago, I decided I wanted to organize um, uh, the AAPA Youth Rising Rally. Um, and it was great. I was, it was, I was, I'm so grateful for everyone who came there and um, all the, uh, the volunteers that we had and also it was very inspirational for me personally because we had a lot of speak a lot of youth speakers um which is great to see um because i am also youth and 
um, uh, a big part of the um, sm the organization that I founded um, is Youth Voices. Um, and it was great. Um, we had speakers and we marched to the, um, the footbridge overlooking the highway. Um, that was my initial idea to just hang a sign there. Um, and then mm -hmm. um, the rally sort of grew from that. And it was great. There were all, there, all these cars honking in support of us. And um, I was, it was such an um, inspiring experience. That's fantastic. Tell me, when you were walking down the street with um, your, um, your mom, um, uh, you said someone came up and deliberately coughed in your mother's face. Is that right? Uh, no, they were actually, they were across the street, but they like coughed in her direction. Um, it was very purposeful. Um, mm. yeah. There was no mistaking what they were, what they were doing. The, uh, it was pretty offensive. How did that make you feel? when that happened um it made me feel pretty upset about it um and also pretty angry um also it, yeah like i said before it really hit close to home for me because um i felt for some reason that my community was more protected or that these things didn't happen um but that's really not true um it happens um all the time and even just little things um in my community before covid um it all came, uh, sort of came together. I came guess. together like that. What were the other things you've experienced? I think you said before you and uh, was it your brother were experiencing um, um, racism uh, beforehand as well? Uh, yeah, like names, um, being called names, also um, the classic where are you from? No, where are you really from? Um, <laughs> all right. <laughs> That's pretty offensive, isn't it? Yeah. The uh, given that America is full of immigrants, including the English, by the way. So, uh, so uh, anyone who can claim to be around for a long time, the Native Americans. So, so um, and so, um, so you you see this incident uh, with your mum, uh, uh, and made you feel bad and made you feel angry. And I think what you said is it brought together some of the other experiences you'd had of name calling in the past, et cetera. And then you decide to do something about it. And so the first thing you did about it, if I've got it right, is you decided to address the assembly at school. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And how did that go? What was the response from the other kids? Um, well, it was a very short announcement. I didn't feel so good about myself afterwards. Um, <laughs> and the other kids, they didn't really mention it or anything like that. Um, but I did get a lot of support from my peers, um, mm. at the actual rally. Um, and a lot of them came and supported me. Um, so, but initially, um, it was, it was, it was like an unknown topic basically. Um, but I, I don't know, I wanted to make it a bit more known just in my school. How were you feeling about uh, the first time you had to make a, uh, a speech to a big rally? How did you feel about that? Um, well, actually, when I decided that I wanted to do something and hang the sign on the bridge, um, I actually, I didn't think that I would have to speak for some reason. Um, but then, like, a few days later, I was like, oh, no, I have to write a speech now um, and do this. But um, I don't know. For some reason, I wasn't very nervous about it. Um, if you had asked me to do something like this a year ago, I would have said absolutely not. Um, mm -hmm. I'm too nervous about having to speak in public, but um, I feel like this um, this issue it made me really feel like I I, wa I wanted to say something about it, and I really wanted to do something about it. Um, uh, but yeah, I was surprisingly well, not very good. Yeah. How did the speech go? Did you feel good about it afterwards? Oh yeah, I definitely did. Um, I felt I felt good about my rally speech afterwards. Um, yeah. Um, also, there are. What, you, what was your What was your main message? What did you actually say to folks? Oh well, I I told my story about um, how the rally came to be, um, and I talked about like you know, my personal background, and also some of the things that have been happening. Um, but our my main message was. Um, 
like my voice and youth voices. And um, I, I took a very, I guess, grateful tone that everyone was there. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's terrific. The, um, uh, with the group that you were able to establish out of that, what do you hope to achieve? What do you want it to do? Tell me what your vision is. Um, well, there are three things that we want to work on. I know personally, um, I'd like to work on many things, um, but three things that we really want to focus on are um, coalition building and allyship building between other ethnic minorities. Um, COVID-19 has definitely magnified many of the um, these issues and I feel like we all need to come together um, to support each other and um, another way that we can build allyship um, and coalition is through mental health which also impacts a lot of youth um, mm -hmm. and there's a big stigma around mental health in the AAPI community and other ethnic minorities uh, or in other communities of color and um, we really want to work on uh, breaking the stigma and helping youth in need. Um, yeah, and then our second issue that we want to work on is voting. So although API are the highest grow or are the um, the highest growing um, ethnic group in the country, we are the lowest registered lowest registered to vote, and we have one of the lowest voter turnout rates. Um, so I really oh, want I learned something about America today. I didn't know that. So uh, that's extraordinary. AAPI, lowest registration rate in the country. There you go. So what's your message to all those AAPI folks out there who are not uh, registered to vote right now? Um, well, definitely. I know a lot of these, uh, these come around through because um, half of AAPI are first generation. So some of it is language barriers, some of it's other mm -hmm. issues. But if you're AAPI, um, just learn how to do it or ask someone, ask your friend. Um, also, don't be afraid to get registered even right now when there's no big election happening um, because sometimes it's too late to register. Um, and that would be very bad if you wanted to vote, but you can't because you haven't registered yet. Um, yeah. I find it great, I um, mean, you know, here you are as a 13 year old telling people who are 30 year olds uh, to get out there and vote when you're five years off being able to vote yourself. Is that right? <laughs> also, the third issue that we want to work on is education. Um, so integrating API history into schools. Um, so we actually we're going to launch an email campaign in May um, and the message will be about um, we just want at least one day of AAPI history or one lesson a year, at least one lesson a year. And the idea is it's gonna be a viral email campaign. Um, so we'll send an email with instructions to kids from across the country. And then they will send um, so they will send that email to their teachers, um, whoever, parents, heads of school, um, and and that that is more of a symbolic email, but even if we can just get one teacher to teach a PI history one or more days a year, I feel like that'll be a success for our group and for me. Yeah. If you're talking uh, to, if you had just a couple of words or a few sentences to say to someone watching this video today uh, who has uh, themselves said or done racist things towards Asian Americans, what would you say to them? What would you say to their face if you had that chance right now? Um, I, if you have not apologized yet, um, just please do go apologize. Or if you are not in contact with the person anymore, um, just support the AAPI community in any way that you can. Um, obviously don't do it again, um, but uh, try supporting the AAPI community as much as you can. Um, and if you know the person personally and you feel like you might have said something and you're not totally sure, just clarify with them and just say sorry. Um, yeah. So your message is um, kind of uh, very much at a personal level. If you've hurt someone personally, make it up. What if it's someone that you've um, 
uh, never met before, maybe not meet again, someone on the other side of the street, uh, the person who um, uh, coughed in your mother's direction recently, you probably didn't know who they were. Uh, what would you say to those folks uh, who um, may not have the opportunity to, as it were, personally reconcile? What would you ask that they think about in the future? Um, well, I definitely ask them to think about their actions and how that might affect that person and make that person feel a certain way. Also that person's family as well. Um, and think about the impact on the community and um, whether or not that's a good thing to be doing to another person too. Um, I mean, it's, it's basic kindergarten logic. Um, don't harm other people in any way. So Mina Fedor, thanks so much uh, for being with us today. Uh, really appreciate it. And really appreciate what you've been doing. Uh, and uh, to all your other seventh graders who've been out there with you as well, terrific. And stay linked to what we're doing at the Asian Society because we are running a series on Asian Americans building America and you are part of the story, an important part. Thank you, Mina. Thank you guys so much for doing this. Um, I know I, it might, um, I'm so happy that you guys contacted me. Um, it's great for uh, Asian American stories to be out there um, and the Asia Society, you guys are doing such great work. Um, so I'm so thankful to be here.